G'day mates, my name's Nick, I live in Australia, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to set up Apple's brand new sleep apnea detection feature on the Apple Watch. Now I was planning on demonstrating using this brand new Ultra 2, which I purchased specifically for this video, but I've encountered a significant roadblock. You see, although this feature is available in 150 countries worldwide, Australia isn't one of them and we're behind everyone else. Same thing happened with the ECG. Came out in the Series 4, we had to wait two years before our dumbass TGA, Therapeutics Goods Administration, said, ah, yeah, okay, that's not a risk to everyone. They were pretty bloody quick with the vaccine though, weren't they? Let's not go there. So here's what you'll need to get started. You'll need a watch, Series 9, 10, or the Ultra 2. Unfortunately, it won't work with the Ultra 1 because Apple wants you to upgrade to the Ultra 2. Pretty straightforward. And these watches will need to be running the latest watch OS, which is 11. You'll also need one of these, an iPhone running the latest iOS, which is 18. So if you have an older iPhone, unable to run the latest iOS, then it won't work. And I think from memory, the oldest iPhone that can run iOS 18 is iPhone XS. Don't quote me on that. That's from up here. You'll also need to set up sleep tracking and I'll show you how to do this now. It's pretty straightforward. So open up the watch app and then scroll down to sleep. Here it is. And then track sleep with Apple Watch, toggle on and you're good to go. And you can manage other things as well. I've done a whole video on Apple Sleep. Click the link above if you wanna see a detailed explanation on all the different settings you can tweak. But that's basically how you do it. So that's number three. Now for sleep apnea detection to work, you must wear your watch while you sleep for a minimum of 10 days over a 30 day period. And Apple will analyze that data every 30 days. And this next part's important. Sleep apnea notifications are intended for use by people 18 years or older who have not been diagnosed with sleep apnea. And there's a few questions Apple's gonna ask you during the setup, and I'm gonna give you some very important advice when we get to those questions, so stick around. So if you've got all that, now you can turn on sleep apnea notifications, and I'll walk you through it. Let's go. So the first step is to navigate to the Apple Health app, Down the bottom right, click Browse, and then find the respiratory category. Here it is here with the lungs, and then you'll scroll down. Now, I don't have it on my phone, unfortunately, but you'll see a section that says Sleep Apnea Notifications. You just click Setup, and then Next. And then it will take you to another screen that has two very important questions. Sleep apnea notifications are only for people who haven't been diagnosed with sleep apnea. Are you 18 or older? Yes or no? Make sure you select yes if you want access to this feature. If you select no, the feature's gone. You can't use it. And then the next question, have you ever been diagnosed with sleep apnea? Yes or no? Once again, make sure you select no, even if you've been diagnosed, because if you select yes, feature's gone. Okay, now this feature will be really important for those people who have been diagnosed with sleep apnea, who are using CPAP machines. And that's because the CPAP machine reporting isn't very accurate, it's terrible. So if you have the watch on and it's showing elevated levels of respiratory disturbances, sleep apnea, and you're using your CPAP machine, what does that tell you? It tells you that perhaps your CPAP machine isn't doing a great job at treating your sleep apnea and perhaps you need to adjust your settings. So it's a really great feature to have, so make sure you answer those settings correctly if you want access to it. And then click continue down the bottom. And that's pretty much it guys. So once you've completed the setup, all you need to do is where you watch to bed and in the morning you can view all your breathing disturbances and your sleep apnea notifications. And you can locate them once again in the respiratory category inside Apple Health. So Apple Health, browse, respiratory, and that's where you'll find the information. Now Apple categorizes these breathing disturbances as either 
not elevated or elevated, two categories. And if you're up here in the elevated category, then you'll receive the notifications. And if you're up there for a long time, you can also download a PDF and take that to your specialist, your doctor, and discuss it with them about a proper sleep test. This is just like an apnea screen. It's not a proper test. Not really. <laughs> All right, so pretty cool anyway. Now, if you're like me and you don't yet have access to Apple's sleep apnea detection feature, there are some other little things you can look for inside Apple Health for signs of sleep apnea. And the first one is the Apple sleep stage chart. Your wake, your core, your deep, and your REM. You see, sleep apnea is associated with movement. People with sleep apnea move a lot more. That's what their algorithm is based on, movement. It's not blood oxygen because of the patent infringement. It's using the accelerometer and movement data. So when you stop breathing, you gasp, your whole body moves. There's a lot more movement. Now with the sleep staging algorithm, that's also based on movement. And what do we do when we wake? We have a lot of movement, don't we? So the sleep staging algorithm gets confused with sleep apnea. I think that's why they ask you there, have you been diagnosed with sleep apnea or not? Um, because sleep apnea really stuffs up that sleep staging algorithm. And what you end up with is not much REM, not much deep sleep, like tiny little quantities, and a lot of wake, like huge amounts of wake. So if you're going to sleep, you think you've slept eight hours, you don't remember waking up at all, but you open up your sleep stage chart and it's just blocks of red, that, my friends, is a clear sign of sleep apnea. Could be something else, of course, but it's like one of the signs to look for, okay? So keep an eye out for that. Now, I run a platform called Sleep HQ, as you can probably tell, and most of the members who use that platform are sleep apnea patients who are now using CPAP machines for treatment. And they use the platform to track their CPAP therapy, optimize their settings, generate reports, and so on. However, we also have what's called a Sleep HQ O2 ring. This is a Bluetooth pulse oximeter. And you wear it during sleep, and it tracks your blood oxygen levels every four seconds, your pulse rate, and movement data. And it syncs all that information, charts all that information up in the Sleep HQ cloud, so you can access it on any device. And if you look at your charts and your blood oxygen is frequently dropping and your heart rate is frequently rising and there's a lot of movement, there's a good chance you have sleep apnea. Anyway, mates, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.